What's up guys? Uh, before we get into this review, I want to give you a little introduction. What you're about to see is a review that I recorded right after watching House on Sorority Road for the first time. Uh, this was recorded back in April. And I recorded the review and I thought to myself, you know, I just ordered this right here, the uh, the Ronin Flix House on Sorority Row edition, which is gorgeous. Yeah, look at that. Look, at, It's just a really nice release. And I watched it for the first time on Amazon Prime, which was decent. But, um, you know, after I recorded the review, I was like, I'm going to try something a little different because my mind does change from time to time. I think a lot of reviewers uh, change after watching a movie for the first time from the next to the next to the next. I mean, it, it happens. So I thought, why not try something different? After I record this review, I'm going to let it sit for a few months, watch it again, which I just re-watched this a few days ago. And I thought, you know what? After the rating, I'll give you my second viewing thoughts. That's what we'll call this, second viewing thoughts. So I could like it just the same, or I might like it less or more, but could be an interesting uh, discussion. So be sure to stay after the rating to find out what my second viewing thoughts were. So anyway, enjoy the review. It's time to review an old 80s slasher classic, The House on Sorority Row. The House on Sorority Row stars Kate McNeil, Eileen Davidson, and is directed by Mark Rossman. What's up guys? It's time to go back to an old 80s slasher, House on Sorority Row. This is a movie that I, I hear quite often as far as like some of the better slasher movies from the 80s. I didn't remember this movie at all, so I watched it recently. I actually watched it on Amazon Prime. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, there you go. You can watch it for free. Also, guys, have to show you the Slasher movie book. I show this from time to time. It is very expensive right now, unfortunately, on Amazon. But maybe you might get lucky. If you look on eBay, you might find a good price for it or find it at a bookstore. But uh, this is just a great book because it has... Almost every slasher, and a lot of Jallo films are actually in this too, because Jallos are kind of slashers. But uh, I even have it bookmarked here for the House on Sorority Row. That dropped out of there. Yeah, and you got double exposure on the other side. But uh, yeah, there's House on Sorority Row. Great stuff. But if you like flip through the pages, you can see all kinds of good slashers there. So yeah, and there's the burning right there. But uh, let's get into the plot of the house on Sorority Row. This is about a group of college students. Uh, they're, they're a sorority house and they're having their big graduation party. And they play this big prank because they have this, this uh, house mother named Miss Slater. And she's a bit of a shrew, really strict, um, kind of a pain in the ass, I guess. At least if you're a young college student, that's what they think of her. And so they play this prank on her. And they, they're thinking that the gun is not like, they're thinking it's blanks, but they actually end up killing her. And so they, they hide the body. And this does sound a little bit like, uh, I know what you did last summer. And then of course, all these killings start happening afterwards. And the reason these killings start happening is because Mrs. Slater, the house mother, uh, wanted a child when she was younger. She had trouble having the child. And so this guy, Dr. Beck, he helps her gives her like this illegal infertility treatment. She has a child, but the child ends up being like deformed uh, and has mental issues. And so the child's name is Eric and Eric is the guy who's doing the killing. And what's interesting about this is they don't really show Eric at all until like the very final act. So it's, it's kind of interesting when you have a killer that all you see is like the killer's point of view. You never actually see the killer's face um, I prefer when they actually show the killer uh, and the killer has like a distinctive type of mask or look or something like that. And plus, I think if you want to make a horror icon like, say, My Bloody Valentine, like Halloween, like Friday the 13th, then I think your killer's got to have like an image, like a face. And this one, he does have a mask at like the very end, but it's like this weird looking clown type of mask. Just very forgettable. And I know we're already jumping into the cons. I do that sometimes. Sometimes I'll just talk about the cons and then I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I like about the movie after. Now, another con for, for this movie, I think, is all the, the actors that are in the movie. A, they're not really great actors, which you're not asking for too much when, when you're dealing with a slasher movie. 
But the main final girl, you kind of want something out of her. And Kate McNeil plays Catherine in this movie. She is the final girl, but um, I think she oversells it quite a bit. There are quite a few scenes in this where she gives off a little bit of a laughable performance. And I, you know, I hate to be too harsh on her, but, um, you know, you, you really want to be in there, in the trenches with them at, in the final act of this movie. And I found myself kind of laughing. So you're going to have your bad acting. You're going to have some lazy kills here and there. Your production values for this movie, not that great. But there are a few pros for this movie. There are a few things I did like, actually. The third act um, in the kills department, I think, gets pretty effective. And I'd almost given up on this movie completely because I wasn't really invested in anything that was going on. The kills in the, the beginning of the movie don't feel that great. But then it get, the, the tension gets uh, ratcheted up in the third act. The kills are especially good. I mean, the, the, one of my favorites is the head in the toilet kill, which is awesome. Now, if I can cut in right here for just a second, I only kind of glossed over the kills in my first review. And after watching this second time, uh, there's a couple that really jumped out at me. And I thought, you know what? I'd like to go into a little bit more detail on these kills. Uh, namely, now I already talked about the, the toilet kill, which is a really good one. But one thing I'd like to highlight is that, you know, when the killer used his weapon of choice, that, that cane... Uh, th there's one kill that's like in the shadows, which is really cool because you could tell they didn't have the budget to really go all out on every single kill. So they had to get a little bit more creative. And so the one in the shadow kill was, was pretty creative because sometimes it's what you don't see that kind of creeps you out. And, and I think that scene worked really well. But I think the scene that has one of the best kills actually is the, uh, the Vicky kill. Where you got, it's a kind of a two for acts. You got Vicky and her other friend, and they're in the van. It's one of the last kills of the movie. But the, the, Vicky in particular is a very, like, realistic and emotional kill because it's not just, uh, you know, a, a quick stab and it's over. No, it's like she gets stabbed quite a few times. It was nice to have that added realism to a kill. And that was probably one of my favorite kills just because of how visceral it was. The killer's weapon, and your killer always wants to have some kind of cool weapon. The weapon in this one is, it, it looks like a cane. And just looking at it, you're not that impressed by it. But seeing it, you know, in effect, it actually works pretty well. You can come up with some pretty interesting looking kills with this thing. So I did like that. And I think it really takes off once we get the reveal that uh, the house mother wanted a child. And Dr. Beck is telling Catherine about this whole thing. From that point on, it really does pick up. So I did enjoy it. I'll give it a straight up humdrum. That's what I'll give it. Okay, guys, you just saw my rating. I gave this movie a straight up humdrum. Now, what are my second viewing thoughts? First off, let me just say, this Ronin Flix release is gorgeous. The transfer, it, it, it got a, uh, I think a 4K scan here. It doesn't say 4K, but it says a brand new scan from the original Internegative. And let me just tell you, it looks really great. But also the audio, the, the first scene with the opening score, um, it just highlights the score throughout this, this movie, actually. And uh, Richard H. Band did the score for this movie. And it's probably one of my favorite horror scores, actually, of the 80s. So that's all, that's automatically a good thing. But, um, you know, really, I enjoyed this movie much more the second time. And let me tell you why. First off, in my original review, I was talking about Kate McNeil, who plays our main final girl, Catherine. And how I didn't find her as great as she could have been. After this second watch and, you know, doing some research behind the scenes, this was like her first role. She didn't even have a SAG card at this time. And I think maybe I was just a little bit more immersed into her as a character in this movie. And 
the second viewing, I actually enjoyed her much more as a final girl, actually. You know, you could tell that she was giving it her all. Now, I will maintain that she did go a little bit too far with some of the scenes, but overall, I still much more preferred her performance. And also regarding uh, Catherine as a character, this is the one person who was against the prank from the beginning. This is silly. I mean, I mean, we're supposed to be mature adults by now, right? One more fling won't set us back any. So after everything goes wrong, then she's probably the most stressed out throughout the whole movie. You know, she's like, I didn't even want this. And I'm having to deal with all this crap. And I, I, I really dug that about her character. I've already talked about the kills uh, and, and Vicky. Eileen Davidson was uh, one of the better characters in this movie, actually. You know, I think you could have had her as a final girl, actually. But I think she suited kind of the more promiscuous character as well. And she's a very sexy woman, actually. Which is always nice for a slasher movie. And also... Um, Eric as a killer, again, I found him much more interesting this time around. It, it kind of reminded me of what they did with Billy in Black Christmas. Uh, you didn't see Billy that much at all throughout the whole movie. Same thing with Eric. He was much more mysterious. And especially on that Vicky kill, how you see uh, just really the shadow of his, of his face and then, you know, it's lit from behind. It reminded me of the shower scene in Psycho, actually. So overall, guys, I'm glad I did this experiment because I'm kicking my rating up to a purchase worthy. I believe this is sold out now, the Ronin Flix version, but uh, look for it if you can find it because it's definitely one of the better 80s slashers and I'm glad to have it in my collection. So anyway, back to the original review. And some might get it mixed up with Sorority House Massacre, which is uh, a movie I got at Spooky Empire. This movie, I think, is actually out of print on Blu-ray. But Spooky Empire, they had some nice vendors there that had a lot of these out-of-print titles. I got this one for 25 bucks. Haven't seen this one yet. Looking forward to watching it, though. And I have seen the, the Sorority Row remake. I remember not liking that one at all. Like, I think the original is at least better than the remake. So, I might give the remake a review uh, down the road. But, uh, yeah, I, this if, if you're, like, really, really starving for an 80s slasher and you've seen everything else, then, yeah, check this one out. So anyway, guys, that is my review for The House on Sorority Row. What are your thoughts on this movie? Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do a few fun Fridays. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and drum them out.